on today's episode of Moto Cheese. What's up, boys? Look at this. The biggest Blue Eddy yet. Oh, and she's heavy too. Blue Eddy 2000 watt, 2000 watt hour portable power station. I've been waiting for this one. This one is a monster. I always cut on an angle so I don't cut through something inside. Blue Eddy's up there, top notch. Some would say number one in the PPS or portable power supply manufacturers. I think they're up there. I think their quality and the options that they give, everything. It's top notch. Cigarette lighter, charger. I don't exactly know what that is yet. AC plug and the solar MPPT cord. So the power supply is not built into this. Wow. 58.8 volts, 7 amp, 411.6 watts. Foo Yang. What's up, kitty? What do you want? It's raining out. Two wireless charging outputs, I see. Oh, look at that. 2,000 watt, 2,000 watt hours. Six AC plugs. There's the big power button. Wow, this is super high tech. So it has a DC out. That's what that special plug is. 25 amps. It has two 12 volt 3 amp outputs. It has a 10 amp cigarette lighter plug. USB-C 60 watt. USB-A 5 volt 3 amp. Ooh, I touch the screen. It's got touch screen. Two more USB-A 5 volt 3 amp output and six 100 to 120 volt 2000 watt output receptacles. Brought to you by Blue Eddy, of course. On the left side, that's for car charging and if you want to add a battery pack, then you have your 58.8 volt 500 watt max AC adapter input. On the back of the unit, there's no light or anything but it has all the specs. And on the right hand side of the unit, you have a cooling fan. Same things on the left side. So it actually has two cooling fans. I imagine it'd need it at 2000 watt output. It's a nice heavy cord there. And it puts on the left side. Charging at 391 watts. So 389 watts, 390 watts, 7.1 amps, 55 volt input. Let's let it charge up to full and we'll do some tests. We're at 100%. Let's see how clean this sine wave is. Nice, perfectly clean sine wave. 124 volts, which is awesome. They always give you the extra voltage on these Blue Eddies and 60 hertz perfect blue eddy as usual so the ac 200p blue eddy is on sale right now for 15.99 which is 300 dollars off that's a hell of a deal this thing's a beast no joke let's see what's in the blue eddy packet have your quality control certificate warranty policy two-year hassle-free warranty and one year warranty for cable and other accessories. Every Blue Eddy I've ever reviewed was excellent. Build quality, test, load, everything. Got touch screen, trying to see if there's Bluetooth. I don't see Bluetooth. The weight is 60.6 pounds. So it's 16 and a half inches wide, 15 and 1 eighth high, 11 and a half inches deep. It's portable, but it's heavy. Let's do a load test. We'll unplug it from the charger. Time is 313. Put this on fan. Let's see what it's drawing. Hmm. It must be too low, just a fan. So let's put this on one. About 580 watts on low. 
put it on medium. 844 watts on medium. And let's kick it up to high. Looks like 1365 watts. It's supposed to be a 1500 watt heater. We'll let it go and we'll check up on it every so often. 334. Looks like we're down to 75%. 1364 watts and still going. I got 353 on my clock and we're at 49%. Still 1360 watts. It's 410. And we're at 28%. Still holding about 1364, 65 watts. This doesn't have time left. Sometimes some of them do. Now we're at 5%. 426. So maybe I'll keep this recording. Yeah, the date is off on this, isn't it? Saying 2%. 1%. Blowing a little bit of heat, but the rest of it's very cool. The fan's hardly blowing at all. Put out about 88 to 90 degrees. What's up, kitty? We're at 1% here. And as you know, sometimes these gauges don't work correctly. The first time you drain them down, it'll calibrate better with the battery. Oh, it just died. 0%. 431. So not too bad. Not bad at all. I'm going to plug the charger back in. AC is off. So it's 432 and I plug the charger back in. It shows it's charging. So we'll see how long it takes to charge from 0%. 504 and we're at 9% charging at 367 watts. 6 o'clock we're at 27% cooling fans come on probably to cool the batteries and the charging circuit Is that 129 degrees so take 53 percent 728 908 83 percent charged 954 and we're at 97 percent should be in a couple more minutes And there it is, 100%. I even heard a relay click. And the time is 10.16. So this is your home screen. This is a touchpad. So you have all your outputs. Monitor a wattage on the outputs. This is where you can turn your AC output on or off. And DC on or off. Shows if there's an AC load. If the adapter's plugged in, the car, or the photovoltaic solar panel, and your DC load. In the settings, you have your 110 or 120 volt, 50 or 60 hertz, photovoltaic or car charging as a DC input source, and economy mode, which is nice if you don't want it to shut off, if it doesn't sense anything. If you have the economy mode on, if you don't have anything drawing from it or if it's too low, it'll actually shut the unit off. Language, buzzer setting, there's your date and time. You have your data, so you have your product info, which gives you all the versions, inverter and charger info. That's pretty high tech. It's a heck of a monitoring system. Of course, we have nothing hooked up. AC, DC output. Battery management system. Shows your voltage, your current, and your percentage of battery, and your state, which is standby, because I don't have any load on it right now. And fault history, 
if there's any type of fault, it'll show up here. And your faults are also here if there's any faults. There's six pages of faults. So let's turn on the DC power. Let's try out these two wireless charging ports. Fast wireless charging. Let's try the USB-A ports. Standard charging on that one. Let's try out the USB-C port. This should be fast charging. Fast charging, yep. Try this 12 volt socket. A 96 watts. I do not have the adapter for the output on this. It's an SA20 series plug. So I cannot test that. They don't provide a plug for that. Don't have quite enough sun up here to check the solar. Don't have a big set of solar panels that this would require for charging. Should run this buffer. This is 10 amps rated. I gotta turn on the AC. Here we go. Smaller portable power units won't even run this. Won't even start it. Should definitely run that circular saw I have. Let's try it. This circular saw is also 10 amps. I've been using the battery tools so much I don't even use this thing anymore. Seven hundred and seventy six watts. So, running power tools would be great for using in a remote area where there's no power. This is 15 amps. It's a big metal chop saw. If it runs this, I'd be surprised. Industrial chop saw boys, 15 amps. Piece of cake. That I am impressed with. None of the big units that I've had, 1800 and another 2000 watt, would run a chop saw this size. Still a 99%. I can't think of anything else I could throw at it. The welder. I think it'll run my Everlast welder. I'll just run a bead down this side. Kick it on. Doesn't draw much while it's idle, huh? I'll run it up to 120 amps. I'm gonna have to hold this in my hand, which you can't see if I put it on. Nope, didn't have enough. Didn't have enough. Let's back it off a little bit. Let's keep it at 99 amps, see if it'll do it on that. Welders draw a lot of power, boys. Uh. Uh. 
Uh, almost. Let's see what it says. Huh, automatically kick back on. I didn't do anything. Let's see what it says for the fault. Darn it, look at the sun coming in here. I hope you guys could see that. So we'll see what the fault code is. Hmm. I guess I'll have to go back to the recording, see what showed up. So it won't run a welder. It was worth a shot. Impressive everywhere else. Waterproof ring in there, or dustproof. Nice positive locking plug here. It's for input charging. You could charge from a generator, you could charge from another battery, multiple input charges. These are both input. All right. So you think you have a short cord, but that cord plugs into this. This input cord also plugs in. If you have solar, that plugs into this for your solar panel. Plug this in here. And plug this in. So it says 105 watts charging. 12.9, 8.2 amps. 105 watts. It even has generator energy and carbon dioxide emissions if you're using a generator. So it automatically selected PV and car. And it says it's drawn almost 7 amps. It says 8.2. I trust this more than that. That's an old power supply. I wonder if it'll charge from the USB-C. That got warm. Make sure you got a good 12 volt socket. No, the USB-C is out only. Let's see how this packs back up. So it does all fit. Nice package. That's what she said. This does not have Bluetooth and it does not have a light. So I could definitely see this unit as an off-the-grid portable power supply in, say, a cab and a camper. It's a little heavy for hiking for sure. This is an excellent unit for overlanding, as it states here. For indoor, you can use it for a refrigerator, a kettle, toaster, a blender, coffee maker, rice cooker, laptops, phones, lighting, etc. And for outdoor use, you can use it for a car fridge, a car vacuum cleaner, and other equipment. Garden electric tools, power tools such as blowers, lawn mowers, electric grills, electric saws, barbecue grills, LED lights. So I like it. Very impressed. I guess you'd need like a 3000 watt or larger to run a welder. It did pretty good though. I can't wait to look at the video and see how high it was. So what do I think of this unit? I think you can never go wrong with a Blue Eddy. They are top rated. Their customer service is excellent, the warranty is excellent, the build quality, the parts that they use, the batteries, everything top notch on Blue Eddy. So I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did making it. And there will be a discount code below and a link to buy it. So yeah, I think this is a win. Definitely two thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products to use are in the description and on motoshees.com. Thanks for watching.